Hi, it's Lauren. Welcome back to my craft room. I have an interactive card today. I'm going to be creating an infinity shaker featuring these really cute basketball clay bits from Kindred Stamps, Lawn Fawn dies, and some cardstock. These clay bits are no longer being sold by Kindred Stamps, but I did do a quick search on like Etsy and you can find some alternate basketball clay bits out there in the shopping world of the internet. I started off by taking some brown cardstock and I used my diagonal cut from Lawn Fawn that creates an A2 size card of all these diagonal pieces. I'm using my scrapbook.com medium size clearly amazing mat to help me with pulling them out of my die. But then I realized that I needed them kind of spaced a little bit more apart. So that way I can add some distress ink to each of my pieces as I am creating a basketball card. I wanted to give the effect of a basketball court as my background. So I'm using my craft card stock and I'm grabbing a few different brown colors of distress ink. I'm starting with vintage photo and I'm just bringing in a small brush and adding color to all of the edges of all of these different pieces of craft cardstock. Next, I'm gonna grab a little bit darker of a color and I will just add in some texture. I have the colors linked down below. I believe I grabbed walnut stain, um, but I will have the correct colors down below in my description. And I'm just adding some just kind of darker spots here and there where I like it. And then for my final color, I'm using ground espresso. And I smush that onto a piece of scrap acetate that I use for a splattering. I'm grabbing my little mat because I've been making quite a mess lately and I'm having a harder time clearing off my grid mat. So putting down a mat, grabbing some water, spraying my ink, and then I have a fine paintbrush that I'm using just to splatter on that darker brown ink. I'm going to set that aside to dry and pick up my mess a bit. Once it's dry, I'm going to peel off all of these pieces of craft cardstock and then I'm going to clean off my Clearly Amazing mat with just a baby wipe, a non-alcoholic baby wipe. So now I need to adhere my background together. I have this A2 piece of white craft, I'm sorry, white scrap cardstock just in my stash. I grabbed my large um, adhesive runner and added adhesive to the edges and center of this white piece of cardstock. And then I'm just going to take each piece at a time, starting from one corner and gluing all these pieces onto this white piece of cardstock. As you can see, I was slightly off centered. I didn't get it on perfect, but that's okay. I'm going to grab some large scissors and I'm going to cut off the excess white cardstock. And I'm going here at an angle. I'm trying to do my best to show it here where I'm cutting underneath the craft cardstock. So I'm only trimming the white. And this, um, it's not a big deal if your white cardstock doesn't have a straight line because no one's going to see it. I'm just trimming to make sure it's not visible. Now that my background is done, I can work on assembling the Infinity Shaker. I'm grabbing a piece of packaging. This is one of my many packaging from scrapbook.com purchases. And I'm lining it up into the corner and grabbing those large scissors to see where I need to trim my packaging. Once I have my little pocket cut out, I'm going to trim so that there is just about an inch to a half inch left of acetate on my background on the part where it is um, adhered together or it's actually uh, one piece of plastic scored to create the pocket. So that way my piece of cardstock fits nicely in the corner and I don't have to um, have too much bulk on the background. I'm going to grab my quarter inch adhesive roll from scrapbook.com and a clear block with a uh, sharp, I guess I wouldn't say sharp edge, but a straight edge to help me press down that um, adhesive and then also to cut a nice clean straight line when I pull away the tape. I peeled off the release paper and I'm sliding it into that pocket adhering down from this angle the left and bottom side of the acetate. Now I'm going to grab some scissors and the extra sides that are left I'm just going to trim the 
pieces of plastic that are going to be folded over onto the back at an angle. I know it's off camera right here, but I'm going to do it again at the top and you'll see what I mean. So I'm cutting my pieces at an angle and this just helps with um, eliminating a lot of bulk behind my shaker card. So now that those are trimmed, I'm going to add that adhesive to the right side from this view and I'm going to peel off that release paper and glue down that flap. Now before I close up my little shaker completely, I'm going to make sure that I have my shaker bits inside. So I'm going to grab those basketball clay bits and I'm going to pour them inside of my little pocket that I've created. So the acetate with the background. And I'm going to pour quite a lot in because this is all I'm going to put in my shaker card. They do um, have a little bit of a hard time moving around. So if I were doing this again, I think I would put some clear seed beads just to help with the movement of the card. But overall, they, they do fine. It's just with the clay up against the paper and plastic, it doesn't have as smooth of a um, shake as it would if there were seed beads inside. So once I have it about as flat as I can get it, making sure that there aren't just a big bulk of basketballs in the shaker, I'm adding that final piece of acetate and adhering my shaker together. So now all of my pieces are nicely tucked inside and all of my adhesive is around the back. And this is called an infinity shaker as it looks like the uh, shaker bits could keep going off the card. Um, there is no clear frame of the shaker. So now I have my two hooray die cut pieces. This is also from Lawn Fawn and I cut them in red and white which are the school colors that our family member who got into university and their basketball team. Um, their colors are red and white so I'm just playing with it seeing how I like the layout and I like the red with a white drop shadow so I'm going to add some uh, glue behind my hooray in red this is a wet adhesive so it gives me some wiggle room and again creating a drop shadow so to the bottom right will be where the white is showing behind the red and I'll repeat this same process for the little dot of the exclamation point, which I'm not really sure what that's called. I know it's a tittle of an eye, but I don't know what the dot of the <laughs> exclamation point is. You can let me know in the comments so I can be better prepared next time. So once I have all of my pieces glued together, I'm going to pop this up to give this a very 3D look on my shaker card. So I'm using some 1 8 of an inch strips from scrapbook.com. These are nice thin foam adhesive strips and I placed it all over the back of the hooray sentiment. For the O part, I am going to curve my um, foam adhesive. So I peeled off my piece of foam and I also peeled off the release paper so that way it is sticky on both sides but it allows me to curve around the O without any issues. I'm going to peel off all the rest of the release paper and then using my grid mat I'm going to center my hooray sentiment as best as I can and then again repeating the same process of adding a little bit of foam adhesive to the bottom of my exclamation point. Now this really just finishes up my card. I didn't really want to add a lot as this is for a guy that I don't know if he'll keep my card forever. So I didn't want to go over the top with my hooray card just in case it isn't as treasured um, as I, it should be because I made it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But anyway, I'm going to glue this now to my card base. I'm taking some two inch double-sided adhesive and I'm gonna trim this to fit perfectly behind my shaker card, my A2 shaker card. And I'm gonna cut two pieces and apply this to the back. This is really great adhesive. I love scrapbook.com's a different size adhesive rolls. And so I'm gonna cut two pieces to fill up the back here. Once those are in place, I am going to peel off the release paper and then I will put that to the front of my card and that will finish up today's uh, video and shaker card. I hope that this inspires you if you haven't already created an infinity shaker that you try it yourself. I am very proud of this family member. I think he's going to do great and I'm excited to see him play when I uh, go to visit um, my family later in this year. Um, it's really exciting 
and I hope he liked this card as much as I do. I think it's really cute and simple. What's funny is I didn't think I would need Lawn Fawn's sport stamp set and dies that recently came out and then here I needed to create a congratulation basketball card for making their university team. So oh well I made do with what I had and I think it turned out really great and I hope that you enjoyed this process too. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll click like and if you're new here I hope you'll subscribe and come back. As always you can find everything I use down below in the description box. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Bye!